Hello and welcome to The Warp Shelf. I'm Frank Duran. I'm Sean Vasquez. And today we're finding out if why the last man deserves to be on your shelf. Uh, yeah. Your warped shelf. Uh, thank you guys for being here. We are doing another book club, guys. You may join us. You may mm -hmm. uh, join us right here in in reading Why the Last Man. Um, it, so is, it is a good one to bring up. Just yep. because uh, I've talked about the actual book club that I have with a couple of buddies of mine before and why The Last Man was the first thing we did as nice. like sort of a test. I figured let's start off with something breezy, yeah. not in terms of tone, but in terms of like, you guys can all read a comic. We don't need like a dense fucking tome to start with. <laughs> we can do comics, too. Yeah, right. It doesn't have to be at all just novels. Um, I I think it's important why we call this a book club is because I have not. This is different than a normal episode where we have finished what we are talking about. This is a work in, you know, a work in progress. Deshaun obviously has finished this. Uh, he's also now seen the show. You wa yeah. You've seen Why the Last Man Show, so he'll bring that up today. Mm -hmm. But I am just fit. I just finished book three here, um, which is why we're talking up. We're going to do part one and part two of Why the Last Man. Yeah. So so just for those who are not in the know, we've explained on uh, both our how to get into comics episodes, at least the first two, like the differences between like a single issue and a trade yeah. and a volume and stuff like that. In this case, the series was originally released as 10 trade paperbacks, so 10 volumes, though now they try to uh, get these uh, books, which are basically just two and ones. Yeah. So like book one is volume one and two, then you have three and four all the way to nine and ten. So in this case, because we're covering half of the series, volume one through five, it'll basically be book one, two, and half of three. Yes. Uh, you, your Our icon will be what you need to read. So if you're wondering yeah. which of the books and the volumes to read, that's it's going to be right there in our icon. So don't don't worry about it. Um, but also we'll put it in the description and all that. Don't so uh, all down below if you yeah. need it. Um, so this is a series I read before. You and I started reading it around the same time back yeah. when we were still in school, and we I remember us getting up to about like maybe volume four or five around that, and yeah. then it was funny we couldn't find the next volume anywhere. It was no. sort of like almost a running gag. Like, we couldn't find it at our school library. It wasn't in any comic book shops that we could check. It wasn't at Newberry. It was, wasn't at New super England. Weird. And it was super the only weird. ones that they wouldn't have. Every single time, they'd be like, all 10 volumes right there on display, except the one we need right now. Yeah, that one. And it's like, and at some point, we were just like, we're, we'll buy it. It'll be here. It'll, we'll find yeah, it. We'll it buy it. Yeah, it was ridiculous. We'll... And then uh, when I had moved back to my hometown, one of the first things I did just... For escapism, I'm like, oh, I have a lot of free time. I'm going <laughs> to start reading again. And I kind of picked up where I left off. I also, like, read all of American Vampire at that point. There was a lot nice. of reading. Nice, nice. And uh, so I had not finished this series before. So it's one of those things that you finish this, you uh, and I'm reading this again for the first time. Because I, in my memory, I can only remember up to volume two with the astronauts being revealed you know mm -hmm. like and it's like that's the farthest in my memory i can like remember i'm sure i read beyond that because we were looking for it for a while yeah um but like that's it, it, so going back this was a very fresh read for me and i'm so excited to be talking about it today because this uh I, not to put it lightly is one of those like comic book fucking masterpieces that uh yeah that we're talking about here and i will have nitpicks about it but i want to get that yeah, right out course. of the way is that like i think this is is masterful in in so many ways in in, the, in its writing in its character development in its uh in it its plotting and in its in its questions and and its answers to everything mm -hmm. uh I, I really enjoy what it's uh, always doing it and might I think, be the well, best take on like the whole like last man on earth yeah conceit because it's not it's a premise that's been done a million times yeah it's but not you exactly feel, but so few new. times it's been done with like this level of nuance yeah I, I, I that's the thing i think that why the last man is full of nuance uh it's got a lot going on constantly you know like in not only in its plot but in what tropes that 
that that that Brian K. Vaughn's dealing with, you know, and and really, I, I think it's important to bring up, and we'll talk about this more, but like the death of male tropes, because that's what's kind of going on here. Not only the death of all male characters, uh, but like, and what happens there. But what happens when all the tropes of men, you know, like uh, go out the fucking window, you know, mm-hmm. like because we're dealing with actual rational people here instead of dudes. Um, and you're just like, oh, wow, cool. Uh, and, but also, I I think it's all it, it, it they're also in, in a last man story. It's usually a very Messiah E story yeah. going on. And I love why the last man, because it's it's. It's not a Messiah story, and it's also trying it, – it also brings into question if you're the last man on Earth, are you even the main protagonist, bro? Mm-hmm. You know, like, you know, like, especially with Yurik here, you know, like, it's just like uh, – I, I think it's quite interesting what, yeah, what, there, what, what Brian K. Vaughn's doing here. There are a few, like, metatextual moments that Yorick has about, like, well, I'm the main character. Yeah. And then he immediately gets humbled by something. Yeah, I I, I like that. Uh, it, it's, all, it's, it's Brian K. Vaughn saying something about, like, human nature, writing, and also, you know, like, just, uh, like, books in general, mm-hmm. you know? Like, and I, and I, I really enjoy that a lot of how layered a lot of this feels because I think a lot of people can read the, this book and just get a like what happens when all the men die and like a realistic take on that but that's yeah. but that what's great about this is 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 how layered it gets mm-hmm. uh, and, and sometimes it can be a little intense with its meta I want to bring that's my like one very nitpicky thing about why the last man is sometimes when it turns the lens and like does the meta stuff you're like you're like okay i guess we're both reading a book now you know like instead (laughs) of you know like instead of being like oh yes of course this guy's reflecting on something it does sometimes feel like yes we Mm -hmm. are book we are talking about books now you know like which of course that's what a literary major would talk about all the time and i think it's funny when he runs into other lit majors and like and they're all like I get it, you know. Like, yeah, exactly. And you're, and you're like, uh, uh, okay. It's just like we could definitely speak to that experience. Yeah, right. It's funny. Um, um, I guess we could tackle this like book to book. Book to book. Uh, book. Yeah, because I just yeah. my all my notes are just labeled in like even though we're talking about a volume to volume as far as like where we're going up to, all my notes are like separated book wise. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, this for one, if you want to feel old, this was published in 2002 so it's, it's 20 years old now <laughs> it was published from like which 2002. is wild it took until last year for fucking why the last man show i i feel like this was a prime like as much as this is a fantastic comic of course this was going to be a tv show you know like, yeah i i almost am like where why didn't this happen earlier on fox or something you know like mm-hmm. you know and of course it did it landed on fox but you know like it's FX, what was, F- which might as well FX. be fox yeah, well, it's all owned by Disney now, so who gives a yeah. shit? <laughs> um, so yeah, that was from 2002 to 2008. Yep. Uh, so it just makes you feel old. So that's real. probably one like modern re- like uh, context that you would have to take going into it is that it does have very 2002 to 2008 language. Yeah. So your mileage will vary, at least on that respect. I always have the logic of just like, hey. It was written it's back a period then. Piece. That's the way yeah. people talked. Yeah, and it's and you know it's an apocalypse book, and you know if it takes place in two thousand two, that's the way they talked in two thousand two. Yeah, and that's the way it's you just know? gonna stay. There's that like point. Yeah, right. There's it's no pro- like there's no solidifies. like progression after that. It's true. It's very true. Um, I and, and it's 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 also some of its strength. You know, like is mm-hmm. that it like in the way that like Watchmen feels very much like the anger of the 70s but also the aesthetics of the 90s you know like it's it this is very like the 2000s you know like yeah especially like like post 9 11 there's a lot of like influence for like post 9 11 stuff in both this and especially ex machina which were both being written around the same time yeah i think it's interesting that he did this after 9 11 you know because it's like you know, we were all kind of faced with this uh, major tragedy. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not saying I'm not saying that in quotes. It's just like other countries p- 
put up with these kind of attacks all the time and yeah. we t- we fucking launched ourselves into another country because of it but, but beside the point um we uh it's 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 one of those things that like trauma of is 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 funny when it's faced to the public you know yeah. like and i think that's what an interesting question that why the last man is constantly asking is how do we deal with an apocalypse how do we deal with attacks like this how do we deal with trauma you know like and, and tr- shared trauma something that like we all go through you know mm-hmm. like and you know i brian k vaughn's writing this before our our lifetime pandemic but it, you know like nine <laughs> eleven is is an interesting look at this you know yeah reading anything that has anything to do with some sort of like mass disease pandemic or plague just hits different now <laughs> it does I, that's Every why single I, time. I, I want to say like this is definitely a read that like it's great it was great before it was it mm-hmm. was very it was a very good read before but reading it now you're like it hurts a little more. <laughs> just, that hurts. knife was already there, but now you're yeah, twisting you're like, it. You're like, oh, Jesus Christ. People do act like this. Jesus, yep. fuck. Like, you know, like it's one of those things that you're like, you're like, oh, sometimes you're like, oh, people wouldn't act like this. And then you're like, oh, people do act like this constantly. Yeah. You know, like, like it's, it's pretty, cl- it's pretty fucking on point. Not only in terms of the writing, but in terms of the dialogue, which. Yes. Vaughn has always been great with dialogue in mm-hmm. all of his work. And as someone whose favorite thing to write is dialogue, I appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Like, it's very quippy. It's very, it gets very meta sometimes. <laughs> and I just, I love, it's funny, even though this is like 20 years removed, all the political jokes are even funnier to me now. Right? I, I, seriously, some of them are even better, you know? Like, and you're just like, Jesus Christ. Like, this so- age, like, so fucking well like you have little stuff like when the men all die of course the washington monument of all things the this big fucking phallic ass symbol would become like a place of worship and grief that's really funny yeah but then like like, jesus i fuck it was already funny back then but i fucking cackle that they're like what is it terrorists worse republicans (laughs) (laughs) i know i was like i was like jesus and like and them like storming the White House, you're like, well, this is a little fucking reminiscent. I fucking yeah. seen this bad boy before, you know. Like you're like, you're like huh? Uh, and it's 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 funny because it's like it's almost like Brian K. Vaughn like being able to like predict or at least analyze. That's how people really are, you know. Mm. Like in, in that that you know like. You know, they use this veneer of of love and, 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 and Christianity and being like, oh, Jesus forgives. But also, we're going to storm the White House because mm-hmm. the, the, the guy who has three different wives and also has many different court cases told me I should do it. You know, yeah. like, it's one of those things that where you're just like, whoo. Like, but it's yeah. funny, the people that people line up behind, you know, like, you know, like, it's one of those things that, like... It's wild. What? Uh, what? It's and, like and, I deserve my husband's seat. Why? Because he was my husband. You're like, uh, ah, uh, you are not your husband. You know, like, yeah. But that that that's why I think it's so interesting about this. I think that this is a a constant, uh, pretty fair examination of the gender roles. I think mm-hmm. I, I it, it's 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 quite interesting. What? Uh, yeah, it what helps he's doing that there. like he's not writing collectives; he's writing individuals. Yes, because I know absolutely. like one of the things that also gets uh, criticism as far as like looking at it with a modern eye, which I more uh, kind of disagree with, is the Amazons in general. Yeah, just the whole like that wouldn't happen. I'm like, I don't know. I'd think something similar, maybe not that exact thing. Something like that would happen. Something like that might happen. I, I, it's one of those things that, like, sure you can say it's a little extreme, but this mm. is an extreme situation yeah. where, a, a, and it's such a specific situation that people would get suspicious. You know, like, mm-hmm. like that all the men specifically died. People would start to, you know come up with i think it's i think it's great i i'm i know i just started book four we're not talking about book four but i love them all all, that the journalist asking everybody uh if they've seen a last man and they all give off weird stories you know Mm -hmm. like weird offshoot stories and it's like it's funny how you know like it it, it, stories spread you know yeah even throughout the half 
even up to half of book three, you always have conversations about like other random characters theorizing as to what happened. Yeah. Like and... what the reason was just like, oh, it was, pr it was probably like a bio weapon. Oh, it was probably the rapture. So yeah. It's like, it, oh, it seems like everybody own... they run into has an answer, you yeah. know, like it's funny. Everybody found an answer, even though there is no answer, mm -hmm. you know, like, and isn't that of course, uh, like the scary parts of religion where there's like no actual answer and they're just like, believe this. And you're like, I oh. <laughs> you're just like, wait a minute. Um, but it's, it, and, and, and I think that's, what's interesting about this book is that it will constantly examine that what we are at. And, and I know this is super meta, but like what we do in as humans when we are faced with an unknown, you know, like, and a great unknown, you know, like something that like nobody can fucking answer. And maybe the book at, I don't know, but maybe the book at some point won't even be able to answer, you know, like hopefully they will. Uh, but you know, like, of course I don't mm -hmm. fucking know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And I would, I, I appreciate that. Uh, um, now I, 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 and I think that's what's so interesting about the book is that it's not just a zombie tale, you know, mm -hmm. like it's not just walking dead and what, you know, we're the true enemies or anything. It's like, no, there is no collective enemy to go to they 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 just died. And what happens in an apocalypse where people yeah, just, it's just the chaos off. of it. Yeah. Like that's the threat, just the sheer pandemonium and that, you know, they never know what the fuck's. You know, like that's gonna what that led to or what it mm -hmm. did, you know, like and you're just like, damn. It sort of turns it into it sort of turns it into like a like a neo western type. Yes. I, I would say that this and Preacher have a very mm -hmm. similar uh feel of being a neo western, of being they like we're also being published around the same time and there yeah. is an Easter egg shout out to Preacher in volume one. Really? Yeah, there's the uh, fuck communism lighter. Yes. No, that's not. That's in book two. That's that. Uh, yes. Uh, it, it, it is. Yeah. Isn't the fuck communism also in Watchmen? I thought. Uh, no. Um, that's preacher. It is preacher. Preacher. With the fuck Jesse communism. has a fuck communism right. lighter that he love. got that he inherited fuck from his dad. Me. Like it's fuck a direct love. like wink because they were both Vertigo books. Yeah. Um. Now. Uh. I, I'm gonna. I, I, Preacher's another one that like guys. If you haven't read Preacher fucking go read preacher that mm -hmm. that we don't it's like it's one of those things that you know we ask the question does it go on the shelf preacher goes on the fucking yeah. preacher shelf would be a great two-parter uh, in and of itself yes we we should do that at some point now we we've been talking up a lot of brian k vaughn but i think a lot of the credit of of why this book look feels real and is so visceral at all mm -hmm. times is is uh can you say the name so i don't fucking mess it up it's either pia guerra or like Gudetta. Yes. i'm gonna say guerra just because of the way it's and just because of the way it's spelled yeah i agree with you there uh incredible art just incredible stuff uh it, it's it's some it's 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 real uh it feels right it 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 constantly is able to get such great expressions across mm -hmm. um uh, and uh, i i like and and it is it is not afraid to play with the panel design you know like in in a lot of ways uh it, it very simple at times you know like very very segmented but like mm -hmm. when they when they want to they'll they'll uh you know play with frames again and again and again you know like uh of course that uh, you know like uh in volume three when she, you know they see a man for the first time you have this page of other beth uh you know like yeah the decompression staring. yeah and like i i love Which that he shit. knows he knows how to utilize well decompression is a great tool especially for a joke Yes. But there are writers who sort of like overuse it. Like if you read Whedon's oh, yeah. run of Astonishing X-Men, it's hilarious, but he does kind of overuse decompression. Yeah, he's like, I'm gonna do it again. And you're like, Yeah, all right, bud. All right, calm down. <laughs> no decompression right. joke has ever topped the one from Invincible. Yes, yeah, yeah. No, we already talked about that one. That one on the <laughs> show. So go back to that Invincible episode. Um, the other absolute strength of 
these the the volumes and then the books is that the original volumes and covers were done by uh massimo uh carnival and uh and and they're incredible they're mm-hmm. they're just like incredibly realistic and and they really stand out uh it can be quite provocative at times uh and and you know are quite striking when you see him right next to Pia's art. You know, like yeah, just it's like... interesting how why the last man throughout decides to like dive into nudity a lot of the yes. time. Yes, yeah, like, it, it it's, it's very, very like it's very measured. Which is why it's weird. It, it's like I made the joke that it need to go on FX, but like it's weird it's on FX because it should be an yeah. HBO. It should be a Showtime. It should be a it should be something that can actually do the fucking sex because mm. that's an important part of why the last man is dealing with uh sexual trauma that what mm-hmm. happens when there is no fucking nobody to fuck in the entire world uh and you know like and and it's and also like you know all sexuality in general like deals with a lot of of deep deep topics here yeah uh, it's very stuff adult that, comic stuff that I, doesn't really want to say that right on like network bat. tv no no and it would feel weird it's what mm-hmm. it's it's stuff that like uh, you know, I'm not watching Euphoria, but like I know for a fact that it delves into like some serious sex things, and you know, mm-hmm. like, and you're just like, you're like, hey, HBO, uh, y- you could do this, you know, like mm-hmm. <laughs> you could also do Why the Last Man, you know, like if you want that type of 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 stuff, and I think it's, I think it's actually quite interesting how they handle all their adult subjects like that, you know, like uh, it, it's it's it it. It's not gratuitous. Uh, it's not like him going around fucking everybody he sees. You know, like it's very real. Yeah. Uh, and you, it's surprising, like how sparing the nudity is a lot of the time. Like it's yeah. not as in it as much as you would think. It's very, uh, I would say, very like maybe more Showtime than HBO Max, where it's just like a naked lady is in the background there. Or mm-hmm. she is just naked, you know, like to instead of being where like HBO where you, they're like an ass. Yeah, when you do it you're up like, uh, front, it's actually kind of striking because you don't expect it, which is yeah. something you can actually read as far as like these books are concerned. You can find like old scripts and stuff like that, like for safe words specifically, where it's just like, oh, we want to make this hit because we've been so sparing about the nudity up until this point. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, I do think that it's funny because... I was trying to read this out in public several times, and then I would just be like, and uh, no, I will put this I, away for later. Uh, yeah, I, I was reading all of it on the train, and of course, like, the one time the train is kind of packed is when I got to say for it. I'm like, oh, of course it's here where people yeah, could, uh-huh. like, look over my shoulder. You're like, uh-huh. I'm reading but, a good um, book. I swear it's good. I swear it's not porn. <laughs> You're like, but I another swear. Good thing to bring up before we like, because I feel like we're starting to segue into like book two. Oh, I do no, no, talk- no. We should go into book one. Like, yeah. For real, for real. Like the initial, the initial like plot of like York on his own, having to like travel all the way to DC on his own, trying to survive. The, um, I love that there's that joke immediately. Yeah. Like, they just kind of put it right up the front, like, when um, that truck driver unmasks him. And yeah. he's like, what are you going to do, rape me? He's like, don't flatter yourself, kid. <laughs> it's such, like, right. it's a good joke, but it's also an immediate, like, line to the reader to be like, this ain't going to be that kind of story. Yeah, right. You're just like, uh-huh. <laughs> like, this isn't your this isn't your fucking fantasy. Yeah, exactly. This isn't no harem comic or yeah. harem anime. Like, you know, like, this is an actual story with real characters that would make deep like you know real real life decisions mm-hmm. you know like instead of being like time to f- <laughs> you know like <laughs> you're just like ah um uh, i i do love we were talking about the use of 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 nudity but it's also striking how because we were saying it's a neo-western it's striking how they use violence all over mm-hmm. in this because of course you have the immediate horror scenes of the first book you have the like imme- and and they revisit it several times of like just uh, everybody dying at the same time and what happens then you know like when all, uh, all the men just die on like right away you know like and it's like you know like of course the plane like going down that was a that's an incredible scene um and, and you know the flight attendant having to be like ah, i'll take it in and you're like dude <laughs> something about planes in any apocalyptic story every goddamn time 
because yeah. especially back then we have mostly like male pilots uh most airports security and stuff like that and like technology is like run on shit from like the 70s and 80s yeah. and they haven't really updated Yo. so it's like every time there's like some sort of apocalyptic threat it's always just like oh god the planes the planes the planes because they're so sensitive they're so sensitive <laughs> um but i i i also uh enjoy how it's not when they're running around it's it feels like it you know it's not it's not a straight up action film you know like they're not no. doing crazy big action set pieces it's that the violence is quick and sudden and and startling you know like a like a like like a western you know like mm -hmm. uh, you know like it's very like pop out of douche you know like done you know like most of the time and uh and and, and for uh, a few things like uh the Arizona section you don't actually see what Yorick does you know like uh, and you know like so it's like they sometimes they they hide the violence as mm -hmm. kind of a kind of a it's funny. It's like almost to protect Yorick at times, even though he went through it. It's like, it's funny to be like, oh, we didn't see Yorick do that, but he did a terrible thing. You know, like, you're yeah, like, you're like uh, it's plotted almost as um, a way to represent his own repression because he yes. tries to like block everything out. Yeah, I, I think that's an important part of, of course, you come to Safe Word and it's like, it's a, and you really delve into the repression, but like, that's mm -hmm. an important part about. Uh, all of this is that is your kind of is repressing himself and he's in his agoraphobia really uh either saved him or you know doomed him like, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know you're like damn uh and it's 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 what i was bringing up earlier of like is he the main protagonist because it's like it's 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 a lot where he Ma is making bad choices you know and 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 acting like he's got plot armor you know when he doesn't you know like and and uh lot and like and and you know it's it's interesting you know because it's yep. like there's it's such a wide cast too yeah it's especially present in those first two volumes yeah like when they go to the washington monument and 355 just lets him get his ass kicked for a little bit yeah. just to make him eat some humble pie yep you're like, ah, yes. <laughs> this ain't I, this kind of story, bro. It ain't this kind of story. I do love three. Uh, uh, I do love Yurik, of course. Uh, a hero is, I think, a fantastic uh, antagonist to mm -hmm. to everybody here. And then, uh, and, and then, and, and you know, of course, uh, her leader in the Amazon, Victoria. The, Victoria, she's fantastic. She's like, she. It's just like. I don't know. It's a female Lex Luthor. Yeah, if you, sorts, if you, you know, like it's crazy. Yeah, awesome. if you know anything about, if you know anything about the way like cult leaders function, which you yes. can watch, you can read up on, research on, and watch plenty of documentaries about, mm -hmm. like just picking those exact boxes that like charismatic leader with a cause who like does little manipulative things, makes you feel special as opposed to the others in the group, yep. starves you sometimes to get your to get your emotions up, which is mm -hmm. the thing. Uh, yeah, you're no, like, it's just uh, those like little things that make you become dependent on this person. You're like, ah, yes, uh, I, and I think that's uh, more of the interesting like trauma examinations that's going on. You know, like Hero lost uh, the the reason why she moved across the country. You know, to and, and quit her job was to be with this guy, and then he died in her arms. You know, like, mm -hmm. and it's like. Uh, and, and it's it's like she was lost you know like without you know without her family and 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 and, and who she was with and it's like it's one of those things that like she clung on to this cult you know like of mm -hmm. course she was kind of sucked in but it's like it's 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 interesting you know like how like tra trauma can sometimes lead to these like what we think is a salvation point and it's just yeah. not you know like you think you're back to something better and it's no it's worse mm -hmm. you know like you're like Ur. it's why cults are so scary they prey on people who are already traumatized and you're yeah. like stop that shit uh which is why it all comes to a head as far as book one is concerned with the marisville stuff which is a good yeah. section yes oh great great oh so so fucking good um i if if, if and uh the so three or five's great i i another favorite character of mine and i think she's written so well 
constantly is Dr. Man. Uh, I, I think yeah. Dr. Man is, is, is a complicated character. And I think that's, what's so great about her is that that's she's one of like my big beefs with the show. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Did they fuck up Dr. Man? It's more just like, it's just the way she's characterized. My big problem is that she's not bitchy enough. I love my oh, bitchy yeah. Dr. Man. Dr. Man is just done with everyone's shit all the time. And that's why I love her. And She's too nice in the show. I don't like it. Uh, I don't like it. Uh, I don't like it. She's too nice. Rough. Yeah, I agree. I think that's one of the things that works so well is that, like, is Dr. Man is just like, done with your shit. I'm done with your shit and your shit. Get that shit out of here. You know? Yeah. Like, she's constantly like that. I, I love that. Um, yeah, I'll talk about the show more once we pretty much wrap up book one since that's more or less what the show got to cover. Interesting. Okay. Um. So, yeah. Uh. Uh. uh so more about book one. I I mean, uh, as far as book one, like we've pretty much covered most of it, aside from uh, the Marisville bit, which is at the end. Yes. But you do have like little stuff, like we talked about the Republican scene where they try to seize the White House. The fact yeah. that um, the fact that like York's mom is still a congresswoman and her seat has just moved up significantly. Yep. Like, just by virtue of the chain of command <laughs> being gone. And suddenly she's president. And you're just like, why? Well, she's not president yet. There's yes. the real president that they bring in later, which is something the show changes just to make it simpler. They just yeah. make her president. They're which just I like, get. That's a change that doesn't really bother me. Yeah. No, I see that. I see that. Just being like, keep it simple. Move it forward. You know, mm -hmm. like, here's the character. Here it is. Um, and I, I, I do really love... The, also the setting of like really shut down Washington DC I think it mm -hmm. I think it works really well it, it's and and it it seems dangerous you know like at all times and I, I dig that uh <laughs> you're like you're like cool cool um and I, I also uh they introduce Beth who is who's uh uh Yorick's like fian uh, I say fiance because he has quotes, it, yeah. yeah quotes because he never really asks her you know like and uh and 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 she's over in australia and you get introduced to her and then it's one of those things where it's just like it's such a driving force for him you know like mm -hmm. that he's trying to get to beth you know like at some point and it's funny because it drives so much of what he does constantly and it's such a a, a pipe dream at times yeah you know, like, yeah that's and that's the thing and that's something that the uh the book later on won't try to hand wave away the fact yes, that it's the fact that God. it's like it's very much a pipe dream and something that he's just clinged on to even if it doesn't make much sense anymore yeah no i i like it because it's it's like the classic hero motivation but they're able to dissect it and be like yeah be like yeah but that's ridiculous right like isn't that like insane in this in this instance you know mm -hmm. like you know like it doesn't it not make sense at all and why would you continue to do it even if it doesn't make sense you know like yeah and it's uh, i think that's quite interesting you know what they what they're able to uh what brian k vaughn's able to examine there you know mm -hmm. i think that's one of the best parts about this this book in general you're just like oh shit like yeah. we're dealing so, with tropes here we're taking them apart <laughs> yeah so the marisville bit yes uh, i i i do love the marisville bit because it feels i it, it felt like it was coming to the head right from almost the beginning you know like mm -hmm. you're just like ah yes like <laughs> the amazons are chasing them down you know like what happens when you know you they, they run in into something a little different than just apocalypse ridden places you know like what if these yeah. women got this whole town together and run it right and like you know mm -hmm. of course they did you know like you're like you're like fuck of course they did you know like you're like yeah and just the <laughs> idea that like oh yeah the american prison industrial complex is fucking garbage and i like that 355 yep. says it i'm just like it was bad before the plague <laughs> right you're just let like, alone if we try to reinstitute it now right I love I, I actually really love that dissection of it because it's one of those things that like it really it's easy to be like yeah but you're putting away bad guys when you're reading comics you know mm -hmm. like a lot of people's morality when you're reading comics is very simple bad guy put him away you know bad yeah. guy put him away and I think that that's what's so great about why the last man is that even in a comic book we're not just playing with the simplest fucking 
morality fucking compass around, mm-hmm. you know, like, and, and, you know, we, we can actually examine what, what we're actually doing with this punishment system, you know, like what's actually happening. Well, if it's actually benefiting society in any way, you know, like, or are we just punishing poor people, you know, like, mm-hmm. and you're just like, what the fuck? Uh, <laughs> uh, the and, Marisville uh, bit is also good just because it feels like we could have, really padded out the Amazon and Victoria thing yes. for the entire series in a lesser book. Just like, yeah. well, we have Victoria. We have our villain that we can just like utilize for the rest of the thing. And the fact that even though we do get more Amazons later, they pretty much stop being like the main threat to the yeah. to the party of three pretty much after this. Right. It's kind of like they take they're able to actually take them down. And I, I kind of really enjoy that. You know, like it's just like, damn, they really took them apart. Like, fuck. Yeah, it speaks to like, well, where do we go from here? Well, you figure it out. Yeah. Right. You figure it out. I I I really enjoy all the action here, too. I think that the, it feels uh, visceral and real. And, and, and you know, Yurik has some real like feelings here of course Mm because it's just like an innocent woman has gone down you know like and you're just like by his sister and you're just like oh jesus you're just like (laughs) you're like oh jesus and i i do also love brian k vaughn for constantly of course he was making a shakespeare reference with with uh, Yorick and Hero here, but like, mm-hmm. uh, uh, it, like he continues to make the references several times. And yeah, like, you would think it'd be only good for like one joke. Yeah, but he, but, find, oh. he finds a way to integrate like multiple gags about it. And it's funny because it's like their dad kind of like traumatized them with Shakespeare, which is like you know sometimes the way Shakespeare is taught is trauma, mm-hmm. like just like beating it into you instead of actually being like, I enjoy this. And I'm having a good time. It's like, nope, you've memorized all of yeah, this. Yes, like any, I don't know. I feel like any man who would have the audacity to name his children Hero and Yorick <laughs> has to be some kind of pretentious <laughs> dickwad. Yeah, like, yeah, on. you're like, come on. Um, I really, I, I, and I love how often they'll just quote Shakespeare before doing something, you know, like, mm-hmm. because it's like right there, you know, for them, you know, it's right on the yeah, tip of, of the tongue, you know, like it's right uh, just because it's, you know, it's like, it's like piano, you know, like mm-hmm. Shakespeare is very much like piano in the way that sometimes you're brought into it way too fucking early and it tr- it's a trauma, you know, yeah. like it stays with you and it then, doesn't uh, go anywhere. <laughs> and you even have the bit where like Victoria insults Yorick by using it. She literally says, alas, poor Yorick. And he's just like, yeah, I've never heard that one before. Yeah, right. I love that. I was like, there it is. Uh, and of course, right. You, it's, it's the same thing as like. My, I'm Frank. Of course, I've heard people call me Frankenstein or, or Frankie. You know, like it's, mm-hmm. it's 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 one of those things that you're like, yep, I've heard that. You're like, <laughs> you are not the first person to hear my name and think of these several other pol- pop culture references. Okay, but whenever people do, they do feel like they are the first one. They, they do. They're, they, they're they so sure do. that they're the first one who's ever done it. It's, it's they're the incredible. trendsetter. It's incredible. It's a, it's amazing what people will think. Uh, but <laughs> but uh, the the Maryville. Uh, uh, thing Maris. is all Maris is uh, it's it's just an interesting it's such an it, it's like there's already the big proposition of like what happens when we remove mm-hmm. all men from society and then it's like then it, we start getting like macro questions you know like what happens to jails what happens yeah. to like you know like and I I I really enjoy that. And it- it's great because there would not be like such a societal shift like this. There would not be just one answer to that. Yes, exactly. You know, like this is it. It's like very what what I think what's so interesting about why the last man is it's very macro, you know, like this Mm. isn't something that's sweeping the country. It's like they're little pockets of societies, you know, like little 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 tribes almost, you know. Yeah. Depending on your circumstances, it would change this and this depending on their circumstances. It'll change this and this. Yeah, it's 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 interesting, you know, like it's it's funny, you know, like where you, you, like New York is in such chaos, but then some other places are so put together because it's mm-hmm. so different, you know, like it's yeah. different where they are. And I know, don't like, envy Vaughn's like place writing this just because the amount of like oh, yeah. foresight and research required to make this and to make this seem believable must have been a massive undertaking. I think that's what just, really kills you start it. off little and then you think I mean, about they, all I mean, the echoes and reverberations and you're like, shit. Yeah. Exactly. Is that this is a big question, and a and a and a lesser writer 
wouldn't be able to answer the questions. They would just have fun. They, you mm-hmm. know, like, you know, we're going to do this. We're going to have some fun. And it's like, Brian K. Vaughn's like, no, we ain't going to have fun. We're going to ask some serious fucking questions. We're going to get some fucking answers, you know, like, and you're just like, hell yeah, fuck yeah. Uh, like, because it's, it's not just broad strokes, you know, like, and, mm-hmm. uh, and I think that's what's so great is that Brian K. Vaughn's able to, like, snipe in and, like, and really, like, like you said earlier, it's a very character driven story. And, uh, and I think that's what, makes it so great is that yeah. it is super character driven but that's um, more or less book one i can talk about the show one. now yeah it'll, okay it, it'll be brief i did watch all of it because okay. i had watched like bits and pieces of it when it had first come out so it was just a matter of finishing it but okay. you know when it got the cancel how many episodes announcement, are they yeah, are there of it's the first... not much i think it's like 12 13 or something like oh, okay. that okay because i kept chipping away at it um and it's one of those things where, like, once it got canceled, it sort of, like, takes the wind out of your sails. It really so it's just like, maybe, it does. maybe I just won't even finish it. And who cares at this point? Because it was up in the air of just, like, yeah, it's off of FX, but they were working to maybe try and get it on HBO Max. But then that those plans fell through, so it's just gone. Yeah, it's just gone. And we'll get a reboot in, like, five years. Or hopefully. something like that. Yeah. Something Probably like that. with a different name. Yep. Hopefully not. Just call it Why the Last Man. Fuck yeah. off. Like, uh, just, why originally anything? they were just going to call it why for a while, just why on its own, only because, yeah. um, uh, the fucking last man on earth was a popular show at the yes. time, the Will Forte yes. show. Yep. Uh, which is so actually just, pretty damn funny. Uh, yeah, that's what I've heard. It's like, sure. It doesn't ask some super deep questions, but it is pretty damn funny. Like, yeah. <laughs> so for a while they were just going to call it why. And then after that started to like whittle down, they're like, yeah, we could just call it why the last man. Yeah, come on. So the short-lived series, I have a few notes on this one. So <laughs> right from the jump, this had a really troubled production. Yeah. This fucking thing was in development for so goddamn long. So it kept, long. It, it changed showrunner to showrunner to showrunner. They went through like four different showrunners. The yep. ca- there was like two different cast like shifts. Like I don't know what the fuck was happening, but they had no like grasp on the show for some reason. Yeah. And it does show throughout the season but like especially when it starts oh yeah just a bad pilot yeah um, which sucks because it's just too I, think slow. That's, I think that's one of the best parts about this book is that the first book is fucking whoosh you know like yeah. fuck it moves it has a pace it fucking is horrifying right off the bat and it, that's it's it's great and that's one of the major problems with the show is that one the pace is way too slow yeah and you would think that it's a TV show. You arguably might even go faster because, you know, TV crowd with their low intentions fans yeah. just got to fucking go. 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 Fucking there's a go. reason. There's a reason we did Omni-Man betraying <laughs> everyone at the end of the first episode as yeah. opposed to the book, which doesn't appear until like seven issues in. Jeez. OK. <laughs> they were like, here we go. But Here's no, the hook. That immediate hook. Yeah, so like, the first episode is hook. mostly just like we're getting to know Yorick and Hero and what they do throughout the day and like Yorick's relationship yeah. with Beth and then we end the first episode with the plague and you're just like what? no just fucking start no, with the plague no, no start just jump plague. in just go no that's such a bad idea so that's such a bad idea you're just like no no you needed that like immediate hook just right off the bat the tone is also like a little too dour. Like, the show takes itself too seriously. And this is a dark premise. I was... And to be fair, the beginning of the book is dark. But there's, like, none of, like, the, the levity and the wit and, like, the fucking snappiness that the book has. It's everything's just like, this is so sad. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like, I really liked the ads that were around where they were, mm-hmm. like, the, you know, they were, like, putting statistics. They're, like, uh, and they were, like, kind of, kind of ill-timed with the pandemic actually going on but yeah they were like you know I, like, I definitely think that would have contributed to it too but you yeah. can't say they didn't try because when they, they did advertise it they were advertising the fuck out everywhere, of it for a while. everywhere and it was they were interesting but they were dark you know like mm. actual statistics of how many men are in each job and how and they would be gone you know like and it's just like and it's one of those things though that like of course it's probably not the best idea to do that during a pandemic put up like death tolls that yeah. are real you're like ah oh, guys ugh. But like, because this took so long to fucking like come out, <laughs> yeah, right. They were like it's one of those things you through. can't control. No, it's, as far it's, as it's why I think during the pandemic we got a lot of movies that like, uh, 
were on hold for so long is because mm-hmm. people were like, we could do it now. We could, we could fucking do it, you know? Like, and you're just like, ah, uh, oh shit. So yeah, like aside from like pacing issues, like casting is solid. It's less about the casting and more about the characterization. Uh, like I like the actor who plays York and he was actually a replacement. Huh? Which so yeah, more is trouble. Good to me because the actor that they picked originally, like he's a good actor, but no, that's not York. Yeah, not, you would not know him. him. He was the um, he was the fucking eternal, who could like control everyone like a hive mind. Oh yeah, no, he's great. He's yeah, not, he's great. He's not Yorick. That's he's, not Yorick. Yeah, he's actually got a band too. Uh, mm-hmm. What is this? The Wallows. He's actually yeah, I love that guy. Um, and but, like uh, uh, Lashana Lynch, who plays uh, the replacement 007, No Time to Die. She's also in Captain Marvel. She was supposed oh. to be 355 originally, then she got recast. Oh, like Emo Jan Poos was that's, supposed to be that's hero, and really good. She was recast. Everyone was fucking recast. Yeah. It, it, it's, and it's sad. The only one that's kind of worked out, I think, was for Yorick and Hero. To be honest, Olivia Thurlby, who you would remember as um, the like trainee who goes with Dread in dread yes yes yeah yes. she's hero in the show and she's probably the best in the cast she's the only one where i'm just like yeah that's great she's that's it. really great yeah. as hero york is pretty good but they characterize him a little differently he's a little more of a burnout yeah which you're just like why did we do like is he is he still a magician or, or are they just yeah like... he still has that stuff but he's still like a little um he's a little more of a burnout sort of like but like, I don't know what to do, but it's yeah. a little more on the nose. And he comes off as a little more obnoxious that way. Yeah. And York is already played up as kind of obnoxious sometimes, obnoxious, but it's like part yeah. of a, it's part of a whole arc that we're trying to do for him. But here, like right off the bat, you kind of make him unlikable. Yeah. And it's not like a good way to start. Oh, that's rough. You're just like, but uh... like Olivia Thurlby's greatest hero. It is cool that, even though I don't like the pacing, it's cool that they're they focus more on the immediate chaos because they don't yes. do the time skip right off the bat. So you get to see like in motion in present tense, yeah, how everything just kind of falls apart and how they try to like scramble to pick up the pieces, especially in Ooh. Washington. So that's kind of cool. That is kind of cool. And you know, it's something like... you could focus on. Yeah. But it's just one of those things where yeah, it the pacing should have been picked up. I don't know what the issue was behind the scenes so much as to why this kept like changing cast, changing showrunners, like why people didn't really know what to do with it when yeah. you literally have a blueprint. It's right there. It's, yeah. It's, it's right there. It's right, it's right there. You just follow um, that. Aside from like modernizing a couple things, obviously. Yeah. But it's. And even it's that, just, you didn't have to. You know, like you could just, just make it a weird period piece if you really wanted to. It's just to. odd. And that, I mean, yeah, I would like a lot of. TV show adaptations, especially based on like older comics, to just be period pieces. Yeah. Like the Sandman's doing the same thing where it's going to be modern day. I'm like, yeah, this is cool, but I kind of want it to be like an 80s, early 90s period piece, though. Yeah, you're like, come on. There's, come on. There's, we still love the 80s. Yeah, let's do it. The 80s is still retro again. It's fine. Um, yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, like it's one of those things where like it's not bad and i think most of the issues could have probably been ironed out with a potential season yeah. two once with they like money. you know got more of a grasp on it but now that's sort of out of the question and just right off the bat it shouldn't have been a network tv show it should yeah. have been on hbo yeah absolutely it just seems like it's it's there's no questioning this is a very adult mature book you know like the references are not for kids you know like the reference and like of course the horror is definitely not for kids you know especially like, something like fx because even amc would have been a decent place for why the yeah, last it's not like a preacher situation where like preacher needed to be on a place that was completely unhinged why the last man could have been good for a place like amc if you didn't have like a premium network to go yeah to. exactly but fx no 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 and and, and it's it's one of those things that I feel like it keeps happening where they try to take these comics and make them uh, live action TV shows and they, 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 they just don't follow the comics. And you're just like, and I'm not saying, I'm not trying to be a book place- reader in any way, but it's like, you're like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. Or they put it in a place where it just doesn't belong. It reminds me of like when Jessica Jones was in development for the longest time, that was supposed to go to fucking ABC of all places. Yeah. You're like, come on, <laughs> that show on ABC. Yeah. You're like, please no. Like, 
<laughs> that would be so out of place. You're like, Jesus the Christ. Most I fucking, mean, like, hey, it's going to be on Disney Plus. On the world. It's going to be on Disney Plus in a couple days, uh, the 13th. Yeah. So it's coming. Uh, and it's like, it's funny. I think it's funny how many places West Side Story is right now. And so is Free Guy. Free Guy and West Side Story are do- getting the same treatment where they're on Disney Plus and HBO Max. And you're like, you know that what? Disney Plus is treated sort of differently depending on the country you're in? Like, yeah, I've because I have like British friends and I have a Canadian friend and I asked them like how what the differences are. And the interesting thing is, is that for us in the U.S., stuff that would normally be on Disney Plus and you get stuff that would be on Hulu just to be like, yeah. well, that's not exactly the Disney brand. Yeah, that might be a little too dark for Disney Plus <laughs> is just on Disney Plus in other countries as opposed to them always segmenting it really? to like Hulu. Huh. Interesting. It's weird. That is interesting. I'm cool with that uh, because I don't need Hulu also. If I could get rid of Hulu and just yeah. have fucking Disney Plus, I'd be happy with that. But they're separate. They're like very separate. My you know, my wife loves loves some of the reality shows on there and we do too. I do too. We've been watching Next Level Chef with Gordon Ramsay where it's hilarious. It's just three levels and if you do bad, you go on the bottom level and it's like a bad kitchen. If you do well, you're on the top level and it's a nice kitchen. But okay. really, it's all, it's all about... too hard for that. The only it's a nice set. Shows, really, the it's only, about the set. Uh, the the set only reality dope. shows I can tolerate are anything that has to do with a craft. So stuff like cooking yeah. shows, even if they're like ridiculous, I can still watch. Yeah. I get that. You're just like you're just like yes. I can see the accomplishment in this. Yeah. You're just like you're like ah, very good. <laughs> um, it's it's not like wife swap where you're like, did they endanger another woman this week? Yes, they did. Mm-hmm. They did endanger another woman this week. This oh, is man. this is terrible. Well, yeah, uh, it's, just, it's just it's just a shame because especially since we're sort of in this age where like a lot of these great comic book creators who should have yeah. gotten their due a long time ago are finally getting like adaptations to their stuff. Like we're getting the right. Sandman show. We and- have stuff like the boys and invincible. And you're like, yeah, about fucking time. Uh, it, yeah, exactly. And it's one of those things that like, I'm glad invincible is doing so well, but it's like, it's sad when, when something like that is a comic book like cornerstone and is regarded as a masterpiece right here. Stephen King, the best graphic novel I've ever read. What a fucking tagline, by the way, Mm -hmm. what a fucking quote to slap on the front. Stephen King himself being like the shit banging, (laughs) like the shit slaps. Uh, and, and, and I, 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 you know, I, I do agree. I think this is one of those things that like, it might not be the best comic book I've ever read, but it's definitely one of the best, like sci-fi realistic, uh you know like uh, it's definitely in like my top five favorites oh there's yeah. a reason why it was immediately like when we started the book club with my buddies i was just like if we're gonna do comics we should do why the last man we should do preacher <laughs> we should do sandman eventually like you have those yep. easy go-tos yeah you're like here we go these are the guys that you're gonna want to hit because they're a master class in graphic novel you yeah. know like you're like come on come on but uh, uh yeah that's pretty much it for book one and we talked about the show so we can move on to book two all right, book two, um, and and book two is 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 brings in the astronauts. It uh, mm-hmm. it, it brings it's like, hey, uh, Yurik might not even be the lo- the last man, uh, you know, that they have access to. And, you know, there's two up in space. You're like, oh shit, what? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, you're like, oh shit, that's crazy. Uh, and I I love that. Uh, I think it's a, it's a it's a really uh great like bring in of of all this um but go go what actually happens in that volume you have the notes there fucking uh, book two is one where they meet natalia and like alter yep. comes to a head to like confront them when the astronauts are trying to come down and they shoot down their shuttle as they're coming down and unfortunately because i guess that's just bad luck the fact that there are two men and one woman and they end up with the one woman and the two guys push her out and they sacrifice oh. themselves it's just like that's oh, just bad so luck no but it's so it's so good though yeah. like that that she she's pregnant from you know and she doesn't know which of which one you know like uh and uh from which guy because she loved them both and you know like you're yeah like, of it's course you guys are stuck was, up there implied that there is a three-way relationship up there which yeah 
isolated from the rest of the world is very much a possibility. I know. I love the line of them being like women and children first, you know, Mm -hmm. before, before, you know, like that they, even in the worst fucking situation, like the worst fucking situation, these guys are still being like, nope, still have to protect my family, you know? Like, and I, I, I like that. I think that that's an extremely well-written moment. You know, like some people might think it's a little, you know, like, you know, like a little, uh, to contrive, but I I don't think mm-hmm. so. I think it how, works so well. How do you feel about Alter as a character? Because without giving anything big away, this isn't the last time you're going to see her, which is obviously kind of implied anyway. Yeah. yeah. Um. Al- Al- Alter the yeah. uh sorry the head of the Israeli like group. Yes, of course, of course. Yeah, that's not the last you see of her. I knew right away. I was like, I was like that bish. That bitch ain't go- done with. I, yeah, she's great. She's scary. She's fucking in like the best way that like, you you know, they bring in like, it's funny because it's another trope they're playing on. You know, they bring mm. in the grizzled military uh, uh, guy who's, you know, somehow a, an expert at this situation or something like that. It happens all the time in action movies. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and it's like, and it's funny because she brings so much of the action here. You're like, you know, like comes down with, fucking helicopters and Israeli army and you know like trying to take all this shit back and you're just like holy shit like you're like what the fuck is going on <laughs> like, and it's 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 wild and it almost it almost feels out of place but it's so badass that you're like let's let's go let's uh yeah let's find out there's a lot of like calm threat about her just yes. like the energy she protrudes because she never like loses her temper. And there's always, and we've talked about this before, just that like calm malevolence. Yeah. is like, almost uh... more scary than someone who's more over the top. Exactly. And you'll get more into alter later, like including like her backstory and like her upbringing. Oops. And you're like, fuck. No, <laughs> fuck. You're just like, Oh, that explains everything. That sums that up. <laughs> um, I, I, I think she's great. And I do love, I, I love the, the 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 whole the way that action all plays out is so well paced and it feels right you know like it's it's not too crazy it's not too sudden it it's it's like this deliberate back and forth between the two parties you know like and mm-hmm. I, I dig that I'm like okay that's cool there's some strategy going on here you know like <laughs> we're not just running out and gunning because of course they'd be gunned down by this Israel Israeli army. Um, I, I I also uh, I love Alter because uh, in a book that's full of uh, characters like the Arizona um, militia, where mm-hmm. they kind of carry on their husbands' uh, like legacy almost. Mm-hmm. They're 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 hatred though, you know. Like yeah. they're they're like they're they're vis they're they're like they're literal. Uh, like conflict that they're bringing on, you know, like they almost don't even know why they're doing it half the time, you know, Mm -hmm. even though they've adopted themselves into this weird fucking cult, you know, like it's, it's like, you know, like they, it's, it's so interesting. What this book deals with not only, you know, men being gone, but what they leave behind, you know, like, and, and, and of course it's all amplified here because it's on a mass scale. It's not just like, a father dying and what he leaves behind, but like, what do all men leave behind if mm-hmm. they all disappeared then and there, you know, like, and it's interesting, you know, how people, uh, will either carry on it or it, it, a conflict or, or, you know, like get themselves involved with it, you know, when they don't need to. Uh, but I think it's funny with alter because she was doing this before, and she's just doing what she was doing before, you know, yeah. like, say, it's like, uh, you just know, like business as usual, business as usual, which almost makes it, you know, scarier, you know, like mm-hmm. where it's not just like, uh, you know, people being scared and trying to like live their life in a weird way, you know, like, but like, you know, like it's like, uh Oh, she's, uh, she's, she's going to keep w- working for her country and saving her country. And you're just like, mm-hmm. Jesus, uh, I and do like, like that though. Yeesh. <laughs> Yeesh. Uh, to the point where like it's not even surprising that one of um that like one of the people working under her is the one that you're just like nah you've gone way off the fucking deep end this needs to stop right, right? you're like damn 
Um, and it, but yeah, this is yeah. like at the start. Book two is where they have the fuck communism lighter, where he and three fifty five have a smoke just yep. for some sort of respite. And I love the joke about swearing in a comic. Yeah, <laughs> you can't swear. In a, I, I love. I did love that. I, there's yeah, a, there's some like, serious. I never saw that on Scooper Man. <laughs> exactly i i do love that um and it's like it's funny because uh that's not even the most meta moment the ma- most meta moment i think comes up when they they run into the play writers and the play writers yeah, which is like immediately next uh immediately like basically predict the the, the yorick's like situation almost you know in mm-hmm. a weird way and it's like and it's kind of funny you know like how much they they like uh it's a huge comment on Brian K. Vaughn and like how people have already responded to the comic in a way, you know, like the idea yeah. of this, you know, like, and it's like, I think like, you know, like the religious people being like, this is smut instead of being instead. And, and they want instead like just weird gossipy stories. And you're just mm-hmm. like, they, that's the smut. What are you talking about? This is real. Like, this is what's happening, you know, like, yeah, but uh, and you're it like, not oh. only does that, but it also does um, the fact that like Yorick himself criticizes what the plan yes. ending for the thing was. It also criticizes what the worst version of this story could be again in lesser hands. Exactly. Which is funny. And I like that sort of like meta narrative about it. Gail Simone did something similar in her Wonder Woman run. Yeah. Where Wonder Woman ends up on the set of a Wonder Woman movie that they're making. And this was years before we actually got a Wonder Woman movie. And the idea that it's just like so Hollywooded up and so stupid yeah. and so like male fantasy ish. It's like worst possible scenario where they're just like Ugh, in the wrong hands. This could, a Wonder Woman movie could be exactly this. Yes, exactly. And, that, and that's what I think. Uh, works so well with that scene is that it really hit. It's like it's really saying like it like you could hit this with a lot of non nuance in what you mm-hmm. think I'm going to do. And that's not what I'm going to do. You know, like I'm not doing that, you know, like, look, I've shown you I, already what this simple ending would be. And that's not it, you know, like, mm-hmm. and you're like, I love that. Yeah. Uh, you have that bit and you have the bit at the end of safe word where it's just like, take your time. Endings have to be earned. Yes. And, Which is and, literally and, also BKV just like pointing a finger at the reader and just be like, just wait. Just Don't worry wait. about it. Don't so worry about we'll it. Get there when we get there. But he's also commenting, you know, like that, you know, like that about the culture, you know, like about comics, you know, like mm-hmm. that's like, I, come on, let's get to it. Let's get to it. Because that would be my one nitpick about Brian K. Vaughn. So, and it's just a nitpick. It, mm-hmm. And I think he uh, it, it, it's it, I'll explain it is that. I think sometimes I can tell when he's, ex- and especially here in Wine Last Man, you can tell when he's expanding the universe. You know, yeah. like he's like, here's like, he's like, this is the next story bit. You know, here's the next story bit. And of course, when he's there, it's great and it's expanded and everything. But sometimes it feels very like almost too deliberate, you know, like mm. too like, this is the next bit, this is the next part. And it's like, and that's what I like about him being like, uh, you know, endings have to be earned is that like, you know, people can be like, I see you're just expanding the story, get to the end. And you're just like, no, that's not how this works. Yeah. <laughs> Relax. Relax. And, and that's sort of like, fun story. And that was sort of the, the only issue with Ex Machina, because I like, I read all of Ex Machina and it's really good, but it should have gone on longer. Yeah. It's funny. It's not that it ends poorly or ends abruptly, but there's so much to mine with the premise that we should have gone further. And I imagine Ugh. he would have, if he could, but I imagine he was like pressured from like vertigo to like, just wrap it up. Yeah. Just finish it up. Finish it up. We gotta, we gotta put this out in book form. Let's go. Vertigo was always like that. They're like, it's over. Get it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're just like, all right. Unless uh, you were like a heavy hitter. Yeah. Exactly. Which I think like why the last man benefited from that preacher benefit of that Sandman definitely benefited from that. Like, Oh, you're the top boys. You can just keep on making it for as long as you want. Yeah. Do whatever you want. You'll keep making us money. That's cool by me. Yeah. <laughs> They're just like, whatever you like. Um, and, uh, I, I, I do, uh, want to say that I think that Oh, sorry, I lost my fucking train of thought there. So to go, what is the next? Uh, uh, after the play, after the we play. get um we get the flashback for like Yorick's childhood in like specific instances, 
like how he was like favored between the two, especially yeah. by their dad. Yeah, and it's like sad, you know, like it's something that like you can, uh, uh, you know, as as you know, people with siblings, you like sort of understand, you know, like uh, you're like, oh, you're like, oh, seen that, you know, like seen that yeah. before. You're like, oh, okay. Um, it's it's interesting. Uh, I do enjoy the flashbacks on Yorick, like the whole time. Mm-hmm. I think that they they're they feel very real. You know, like it's not it it it, it almost feels like he mined it from his own experiences. Mm-hmm. You know, because they are sometimes too real. You know, like you're like, damn, you're like that. You're like that's awful. I'm like fuck, you never know. And then um, after the flashback, you just have that brief instances with the uh, with the four with the four wheelers, and then yeah. we move we pretty much move on to safe word. Yeah, um, and I I do I, I it's funny because of course safe word it's like it sounds like we're just excited because there's fucking nudity there, but it's mm-hmm. one of the most intricately written fucking parts of this comic. It's yeah. so layered and deep. And it and an adult and not and it's like you don't often get scenes like this in a fucking comic, you know? Like yeah, it's just like that was incredible. Like, Safe word was the first thing I thought of with just the conceit of doing a Why the Last Man TV show. Yeah, it's sort of just like even beyond like the graphic elements of it, like oh BDSM, huh? Woman with her titties out. It's just like ooh, it takes a lot to sort of like capture that sort of storytelling. Yes, exactly, because they're dealing with very personal things here. You know, like not only uh, repression and you know sexual drive and you know like and all that, but also uh, it, it it oh my goodness, I need more water. I'm fucking, I can't fucking think for a second here. But like, <laughs> it, it's like it's dealing with a lot of layered shit here without uh. Without feeling unnatural, you know, mm-hmm. like it's very built in, you know, like very what is, you know, has been built into the character the whole time. Yeah. And it's such a drastic sort of like really out there <laughs> therapy session, if you could call it that. Yeah. So you're I just call like it a therapy session. So you'll so you're thrown off by just the methodology of it. But then once you like just let it ride out for a little bit and you go through you go through like the visions like the wizard of oz stuff and you're like yeah. okay this all comes together you just need to be willing to go along for the ride yeah it's quite the uh, dream sequence almost you know like mm-hmm. this whole thing um and it's uh, but also so the the main it's talking about repression uh but also when you talk about repression you're talking about trauma and you're talking about like sexual trauma that like that stays with you you know like that doesn't go away you know like and i i think that that's uh uh, it's so it's so well built into yorick that it was so it felt natural instead of being like i'm dealing with this now you know like it, Mm -hmm. it it's like it's very still built in and there's like a reason why uh 7-Eleven is is doing this therapy session which i of course love their jokes about 7-Eleven they're like oh. yeah <laughs> like I thought just gotta really just funny. address it right off the bat it's right there just right bring there. it up well yeah uh, just like the repression the fact that he was like assaulted by a slightly older boy when he was when he was young yeah you have like that like, I, I love the bit with like this with like the bitter sexist grandpa yeah, and he comes to like, visit. Who's like, let me tell you something about women, kid. And you're like, oh boy, see, that's where uh, it starts. It always starts yeah. there. Yep. You're like, eh. I, I, um, I of course was not sexually assaulted, but even in Boy Scouts, we, I, I had like a, a kind of scary situation where mm. I was tied to a tree, and then uh, the guy was joking, but like was set, trying to set me on fire. And of mm-hmm. course, like that guy got in deep trouble and fucking had to leave boy scouts and shit like that but it's like one of those things that like this is not so far fetched you know like this, oh, it's no. like I've... it's very what kids would do you know yeah. like and you're just like ah oh, god and it also brings up this like we were talking about uh, I, I don't know if we brought it up but it's like you know there's there's this dom and sub thing going on in this relationship here but then it also has to examine the root of the dom and sub thing going mm-hmm. on, you know, like you're like, oh Jesus, you know, like, and it also 
it's Brian K. Vaughn being like, you know, like gender roles and sex. Do they even fucking matter? You know, like, you know, like, and, and also like, so he's doing a lot here uh, when he's saying when he's examining sex as a, as a gender role thing here, you know, yeah. like, and I think that that's super interesting, you know, like it's even more of the macro that I was talking about. My, Brian K. Vaughn, he's like, yo, what if all the men disappeared? What if, uh, you know, like uh, what would, how would these women cope? What happens when you're the only man, you know, like what happens when, you know, like you're just expected to be this weird stud, I guess, you know, like, yeah. And like, it's just, it's just the fucking, it's just the fucking Charlie day, like Pepe Silvia board. Yeah. You're just like, like that was the outline for this entire series. And I, <laughs> again, I just don't envy having to try and plot this out and, and have it have like this level of like world building and nuance mm, because exactly. it's tough. It it is tough. I it, th that's the thing is like it, it, we keep saying it. Anybody lesser, and like uh, Brian K. Vaughn was literally like made to fucking write this thing because mm -hmm. it is so layered that it could f come off as cheesy, as forced, as 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 just being like I want to talk about this thing. You know, mm -hmm. like, that's what I think is so important here is that, like, a lot of books, it feels like they just want to talk about these things, you know, instead of it being built into the characters and it being, like, an a actual discovery or an examination, you know, like, yeah. it just feels like, I want to talk about these things, blit, and they do it, you know, like, mm -hmm. instead of it being, feeling natural like this and has been in the plot the whole time and now we're dealing with it, you know, like, and you're like, you're like, damn. Yeah, Dang. and there are reverberations and ramifications that have to be carried throughout. Like, and, no, and how he develops no way to here. Wipe it away. Yeah, you know, like that's the that's the other thing. This is a huge character development moment for Yurik. You know, and like, this is big because he finds about his him. will to live, and I think that's the huge thing about this therapy is it's about sex and 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 repression, but also about why we live which also mm -hmm. of course is very tied with sex and you're just like ah okay uh, <laughs> a lot of layers here a lot of layers you get into, like here. his survivor's guilt and we talked about york blocking stuff out in the past yeah. like the fact that because we because we started where we started we didn't get to see like york's immediate reactions to right. the plague so you have that moment where he walks outside of his apartment and he just oh. sees bodies Oh, and he sees the woman with the with the baby. Is is he he the one who sees the woman with the yeah. baby? Yeah, that like right shit on the stairs. fucked me. That yeah. shit sent me, dude. Uh, it's like because it's like it's one of those things that like Brian K. Vaughn is aunt, like you know asking these questions if all mm -hmm. the men die, you know, like and then he's like. But he has the fucking answers, you know, like is he's he's not like, oh, we teased this, you know, like he's like, he's like, yeah, but what if a male baby died in a woman? And you're like, please, God, no. <laughs> and uh, and he's and he still gives it to you. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, damn, damn. But this son. also better contextualizes like his behavior in the earlier volumes where he yes. was like sort of cocky and self-righteous. And you find out it's just like, well, it's not really just about that. Yeah, right. It's a, it's a lot of things, you know. Like, and I I dig that. Like, I I I dig that. Even though we have a flawed character, we can see why he acts in these flawed ways, you know. Instead of just being like he's a bad guy, you know. Like, it's just like no, no, no. He's got these reasons, and you mm -hmm. know, like he's acting in his rational way, I guess. Which yeah. you know, like is also very Shakespearean. Which is the the other thing I really enjoy about this, you know, being like, oh, but what about the motivation? It's mm -hmm. just like, oh uh, yeah, you know, like <laughs> dig and. That. Even for, like, as little time as we spend with 7-Eleven, we even get, like, subtle nuances into, like, what type of person she is. Right. Like, the fact that, like, she, like, the fact that, like, she was married to, like, a male agent. Like, that's yeah. the implication. And that ever since then, she's also been, like, somewhat suicidal. So you get that moment yeah. where when she gets murdered, she just kind of, like, smirks as she's dying and just says thanks. Yeah, and you're like, damn. Damn. Um... <laughs> I, I, I do really love, uh, this, this part of the book. I think it's part of, part of one of the more masterful bits out of this whole book in a book that's like full of crazy mm -hmm. moments, you know, like just full of uh, off the wall stuff. And, and this still somehow is, is, is one of the best parts of the whole it's thing. It's great that like the book for it has like you get like a sample of the script for it because yeah. my immediate thought is just like what the fuck did this look like on paper 
<laughs> exactly. You're just like, wait a fucking minute. I do love that he puts the. Uh, uh, this is a fantastic book, guys. If we're talking about getting it on your shelves, this is mm-hmm. the fucking version you want. It it is the new DC Vertigo version. So this is like the newest edition you can yeah. buy. I think. Uh, I think so. I wouldn't be surprised if there was like new new editions out now that maybe like change nothing except the fact that it says dc black label instead yeah right which i think is what the uh, new omnibus because there's like an omnibus oh, out now that's just the right. entire series and one big boy and one now big they're chunker. like we don't say and vertigo think, we say yeah and i think it just says dc label. black label on it now yeah you're like okay guys all right whatever you want just just uh just give us the books don't fucking mm-hmm. hide them like <laughs> you know like that's all i care about you're like I, you could sh- call your company whatever you want just give it give me the books uh in an actual printable format please yeah <laughs> you're like uh please um and now uh book book three um uh no we're still on book two because we have Sorry. the uh the arizona bit here this is where yes. it comes in and i've already kind of talked about the arizona bit because i do think it's one of the more interesting parts is that like you know these right wing militia women uh, all, like basically stopping the country out of just uh, uh, scared, like they're scared, they're absolutely mm-hmm. frightened, you know. Like, and and it's like, and it, I mean, it's just, I mean, that's, I don't mean to get, I mean, we already kind of got political, but like, that's really what it comes down to when we're talking about a lot of Republican and right wing beliefs is there, it's fear. It's fear of losing things. It's fear of 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 others, and 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 it's really, uh, you know, like the and I think Brian Vaughn's able to illustrate it perfectly here. Is that like they don't trust anybody but the people they know, and they know six people, you know, like and you're just like and they, and that those are the only people they trust in the whole world. Yeah. Otherwise, they're all government, you know, like uh, shoe ins, you know, like and, and you're then- like ha. Try to understand other people just a tiny bit, but nope. Yeah, and you get like little nuances here, like the fact that they have to go through this way because there's like a massive forest fire in Utah that mm-hmm. would like block them from like going that route, which is just like yeah, forest fires in that like air parts of the country already a problem. But then you know, if you the cut half of, like, the population down, yeah, it's gonna be harder to quell those fires. You know, like mm-hmm. you're like, geez, and I think that's funny because it's like. It's a story about all the men disappearing, but it's also a question of like what happens if half the population just, you know, like, mm-hmm. and and it's like, and it's a numbers game at points, you know, like of like, oh, we just don't have that many more people left, you know, like. <laughs> you, you think know, BKV like, was watching Infinity Ward, <laughs> listening to Thanos' speech and just being like, this motherfucker spit. This motherfucker spit. Yeah, right. He's like, he's like, I once wiped out half the, half the fucking universe real quick. Uh, it's funny too because we brought up like the moment with like the unborn baby. Yeah, because I've I've had people like ask that question like when everyone got dusted, what happened? What about pregnant women? Were they part right. of the equation? Did was there some like would they what happened? And you're just like this ain't this kind of franchise to like right? answer those kind of questions. Marvel is not gonna answer that Never very that. dark question, you know, like you're just like Jesus. Uh and this uh, uh this part of the book also has a different artist. Same thing uh, with like the troop uh issue. Yes. And I, it's different, but it's good. I really love the way 355 is um, drawn in this issue. I think that's one of the major strengths of why The Last Man is that, you know, like a lot of big series, they have to bring in other artists because you yeah. can't just run Pia out and kill them, you know, by doing this many volumes of comics, you know, like they have to save them for the for the bigger volumes. And it's or like, even if they do most of the book, like fatigue is definitely going to yeah. be a thing. So you're just yeah. like, give look, them a I mean, break for a couple of issues. Thick these books are, you know, yeah. like you're just like, come on, give the guy a break. And, and, but what's great is that unlike, uh, you know, sometimes weekly comics, when it changes the comic book artist, you're like, ah, oh, this is kind of a step down. Mm. Th- this feels like uh, Brian K. Vaughn was like fucking getting this like great team together to really like, uh, it's not, there's no step down, you know, like when it changes, yeah. it changes. It's not like, a, it's not like, a, oh, damn, this really sucks. You know, like you're like, hey actually still good another great artist going around you know like which you know like is what you want right is that like even if it's which artists you're just picking up from another great artist yeah you know, like, it's interesting for as good as an artist as uh, pia is i don't think i've ever seen her do anything else 
Huh. Like I That's know the name question. from Why the Last Man, but I don't think I've seen like any of her other works as far as I, anything. I think like, I big. have some other Pia stuff back here. Uh, I'll look it up though, I, and and I'll I'll uh, get back to you on that. Um, but I know she also used to work like um for like big like global magazines so i'm sure that's yeah. like where like the big bucks came from because you worked on like the new yorker and mad magazine when mad magazine was still around yeah exactly you're just like er and i'm sure those like pay way more than comic books <laughs> um yeah right you're just like Hur. you're like D there it is um yeah no first major project was uh vertigo's why the last man which she co-created with brian k vaughn and pencils for crazy um yes but she did do uh pencils on spider-man unlimited i remember that um she did some doctor who stuff uh that's great uh do, 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 do. and yeah and i guess she's gone back to like doing stuff for the washington post and uh uh you know like uh and in the nib and and new yorker and stuff like that so not many other big uh big comic book things other than she did some covers for black canary so yeah i imagine i imagine it's a money thing yeah right you're just like damn you gotta keep yourself stable comics don't pay as much as you think yeah you're just like dang uh but she i mean she won the big awards she won fucking you know like her her and Brian Vaughn won harvey awards for this eisner's yeah and, and well deserved these these are you know like if you're gonna come into the comic book industry and fucking knock it out of the park these are the fucking you know the, those are the words <laughs> you cannot you do you anything else and say you've left your mark yeah exactly right you're just like damn uh it's like and really yeah left le i feel like they it, she left her mark this is fucking awesome you know like you're like damn um i also i also love Sinead in this arizona issue and feel and felt so bad when she got killed i know i it, it's and i think that's another strength of brian k vaughn it's like another side character that i completely was like wow love this love and then no oh, and they're gone and they're gone you're like damn damn you brian k vaughn how dare you um <laughs> I, I I think that's one of the, the, the best things about his writing here is that even the side characters feel super layered, you know, mm -hmm. like and, and it doesn't feel like, uh, you know, somebody number two, you know, like, uh, so, you know, like, uh, you know, like it just fe it's there's no like. There's no like light characters, it's a, very much like everybody is uh, if they're on screen, they're deep, you know, like mm -hmm. and you're like, all right, that's cool. I dig that. I like that a lot. <laughs> I'll take and that. And then Yora kills someone. Yep. I, and I think that's important. You know, like, this is one of those things where he's he's survived so many of these encounters without having to resort to any violence. And he finally kind of has to. And you're like, she. Yeah, it was always going to come up eventually just in self-defense. And the fact, but it's the fact that, like, he hides it from 355 and man yeah another repression thing you know like yeah. he's just like i'm not gonna think or talk about that and you're like no nope and it's like and it also begs the question is he as bad as his sister who he had already been like she could go to hell you know like she killed mm -hmm. an innocent person and you're like you also had to kill an innocent person, you know, yeah, like you're like, damn, this dude. Is complicated. This is a complicated situation. Complicated Nothing shit, my friend. Right. Um, yeah, exactly. I, I, I do. I do think that moment's extremely well written, too. You're like, dang, dang, son. Um, oh, God, the bit where like they just beat the shit out of Dr. Man. Yeah, you're like, damn, no, Dr. Man doesn't deserve this. No, <laughs> uh, it, but they. They make you feel it. And you're like, damn. Like, why they got to yeah. do it so hard? So, like, the Arizona stuff is pretty much like the rest of book two. And then it ends with that cliffhanger of, like, Hero finding Natalia and the astronaut. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, uh, now, sorry. Now, it's so, uh, of course, explain to me and to the audience the difference between the books and the volumes because the books are just are just two volumes a piece that's pretty yep. much it so if we're doing so if we're talking five books that's 10 <laughs> volumes so the yes. halfway point would be half of book three so okay good okay now uh 
Now, so when we're talking this here, we're at the end of book two, and we're heading into into book three. All right. Yeah, the halfway, the first half of book three. I, I do. Uh, I I think that it's it's great. Book two is is great at being like, here's the question of the astronauts, and then they're able to like end the question, but also expand the story. You know, like mm -hmm. it. It's it's one of those things that. Again, lesser writers would carry these mysteries for the entire fucking series, you know, like would be like, we're, yeah. we're and just going to keep that not even about like, And oftentimes it's not even about like titillating your readers or anything yeah. like that. It's more just like, well, I don't actually have an answer, so I'm just going <laughs> to tease it out until I hopefully come up with something that I might never do. Mostly my huge pet peeve is movies and comics that feel like a great start something in the middle and the grit in the ending you know like you know, yeah like, checking and checking acts are hard like that and it's like and i think that uh why the last man is very good at being like uh even in the second act we're gonna resolve things we're gonna move forward we're gonna like you know like we're gonna keep doing things you know there's another adventure happening you know like instead of just being like Oh yeah, that's the question we'll answer at the end of the book. Yeah, you know, like, mm. and you're just like, and I, I guess I'm pointing this out because this happens a lot in anime. I feel like a lot of anime will be like a cool premise, fights for twelve episodes, cool ending, uh, yeah? and you're just like, but what was the middle? What happened in the fucking middle? You yeah. know, like, and the I, middle parts are hard. It's something I struggle with myself. Like I, I've been writing my book, and I'm always just like worried about like, is that glue between the beginning yeah. and the end working Actually for me? Good. Because every time I go into a project, I know like how I want to start it and how I want to end it. It's the middle I have to figure out. And, and to keep the audience there, I I yeah. think uh, there I bring up a uh, Tower of God, uh, the anime, because it really mm. could be one of those animes that you're just like yeah he fights for 13 episodes and then he's at the top of the tower and kills god or something you know like and you're just like but they it are able seem to keep... that way just given like how tower of god actually went for the first season yes they it, it that's that's what i mean is that they are able to keep the middle intriguing you mm -hmm. know and also you know like keep that thing hovering over you know it's but a lot of animes will keep that thing hovering over and they'll just That'll be it. That's the only thing that's keeping this whole story moving, you know? Like, yeah. they're like, what is that? You know, like, what is that? And sometimes you just need to take your time to actually figure it out. And, of course, you can, you're not always afforded that. Yeah. Everyone's exactly. got, like, deadlines and stuff. You're just like, you need to finish it now. Finish it. But for something it. like this, Why the Last Man, like, it's a dystopia at the end of the day. And dystopias specifically work as slow burns. Yeah, exactly. I agree. Uh, and I, I think especially, especially here. Um, uh, book I, three, book three, uh, we, first half of book three, first half of book three, uh, we get, uh, I, I think, uh, one of the more interesting stories and I kind of already brought it up was other Beth. Um, love other Beth. All my homies love other Beth. <laughs> All my homies love other Beth, uh, basically runs into, uh, goes into a church to like find stuff and, uh, runs into uh, a woman that kind of looks like his Beth and is also named Beth. And, you mm -hmm. know, a trick of the light. Uh, Yurik's going to be like, okay. You know, like, and he kind of, like, lets himself have this respite, you know, in yeah. a way. You know, like, where he's just, like, kind of lets go in in a lot of ways. Where even and the fact in... that it's at a church is no mistake. Yes, exactly. And I also love that theological talks that are going on here you know like that she's talking about uh and you know how the church even fucking if it does move forward in a, in the face of losing all the men who fucking yeah. propped it up you know like and you're just like nope it doesn't they're too bad when they're all priests are men you can't have if you, you were all like nope females can't be priests you're like well what happens when you're all gone bitches um mm -hmm. but you know like but sorry um <laughs> but it's like it's, <laughs> so that's the, the old catholic boy and you yeah, start like, rage to like, yeah. against the machine uh but <laughs> it's uh I, I think it's i think it's actually quite interesting like the answers they're able to give here and and also how deep the theology goes at points you're like you're like a lot of books would just be like yeah but is god dead you know like and, but then they're like this is deeper like, you know like what happens to the 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 theological manifications of everything that's going mm -hmm. on you know like you're just like you're like damn 
but I I think uh, Other Beth is is extremely well developed for a character we're just like running into. You know, like they, yeah, they seem to develop. And she's only in there like, for like an issue or two, so you're yeah. like, huh, huh. Again, all these like bit parts which may or may not be bit parts depending on if they show up again. Yeah. Just like all feel so developed and nuanced, like even down to like the very first issue with the truck driver, you feel like you know exactly what type of person that person is and like what they've been through. And we spend so little actual time with her. I, I, yeah, exactly. It's, it's, it's perfect. And of course, uh, this is, of course this is the Amazon's being back. This is kind of their last, real whimper you know they try they're like whimpering here you know not really doing much yeah you know, well it's, like, it's one of those things where like in like any wild group like children this, yeah any group like this is gonna have like weird offshoots we're just like we don't disagree with the way those amazons do things this <laughs> faction of the amazons does things this way and i like the fact that other beth like makes fun of them from that just like yeah. if you were really like your other sisters you would have cut off your breast already yeah right she kind of calls him out uh, i do love that whole segment you're like damn mm. it's, it's again more neo-western shit where it's just like everyone pointing guns and having full conversations you know like um but of course one of my 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 the favorite parts about this other beth story is that we do get a look at beth you know like which we have not at all really you know like we've been like what's what's beth been up to and you know she's just and still you fucking around you in the buried- outback you could have very easily have just not shown her too. Yeah, exactly. We could have not known that Beth was okay or not. And, you yeah, know, they and it would have been. It that. wouldn't have been like either a good or a bad thing. It could have just been a choice. Yeah, and uh, I, I, you're yeah, just like, damn. Um, I do. Uh, and then of course we go right in after that. We're going right into heroes. What hero has been up to, and mm-hmm. and kind of. Uh, uh, also some hero backstory, you know, which was uh, uh, rough at times. You're like, Jesus oh God. Christ. Oh, God, like, that bit where she's at that party and that dude, like, ugh. creeps on her. Like, I've heard so many stories exactly like that. Yeah. It, oh, God. And that, like, like, she's 15 there and you're just like, Jesus Christ, no, dude. Like, what the fuck? Um, but it, it's just like, it, it's it's wild you know like it's just like it's it's crazy it's good stuff because it's it's it, like you said like you said there you already knew stories are like that you know mm-hmm. like where it feels real like that and we also get to see hero uh lose her guy again that she and the whole scene where she's talking with her parents about going with the guy and then it cuts immediately to him just dying and you're just like fuck um and it really goes through kind of hero's whole perspective of the story instead of like instead from your side, you know, like, and you're like, Hey, you're like, okay. Um, and then it's funny. We bring back the significance of the ring of, uh, you know, to give to Beth, it, even after this other Beth story, you know, where he might fully give up on seeing Beth here. We kind of get mm-hmm. back into like the ring being important and like, you know, the, his promise to see Beth and, you know, like, you're like, Oh shit okay all right like get the some behind the scenes of him at the store you know asking about rings and then he gets you get from the magic store gets a ring and you're just like of course yep. um and uh, it's just it's kind of incredible and then we're introduced we've already seen them a little bit the ring of uh, uh satakit satakit and like and uh, it's kind of like an alternate spy ring you know like that feels like they're doing something, but obviously they're not doing much as shit, you know, like, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, which I, I think really is interesting. Much of a purpose now. Right. I, I did really like that, uh, you know, we built up uh, 355, 355 having this, uh, what's it called? The a- Amulet of Amulet uh, of Helene or Helen. Uh, of Helen and and we built it up to being like, is this the reason for the plague? And then it for for it to just be like, it's basically an art piece that you guys have assigned some weird significance to. You can fucking destroy it. Like, to go ahead. You know, like, yeah. you, like you're like, you're like, okay. And that kids right. is called anticlimax. Yeah, I and really like that. Tool. I really like that because it was one of those things that like gets you interested, and you're like, mm-hmm. well, what's three five toting this like maybe apocalyptic thing around with her? 
Um, and then you're like, nope, it's just people being dumb. Like <laughs> you're just like, yeah. just people being crazy and shit. You're just like, oh, of course. I do like that. There's still another spy ring out there trying to stop them, not just the Israelis. You know, like mm-hmm. you're like, okay, cool. You're like, you're like, I like that. I like that. Um, and then of course we like uh, uh, we learn here that you know like that ampersand it, uh, it is is actually super fucking important and you're like oh shit like yeah <laughs> and dr man theorizes that it was actually ampersand uh being yeah. the one who helped yorick survive the plague in general you're just like oh shit dude um and i love that he she learns it by him getting botulism <laughs> like you know like just eats raw like bad tomatoes and fucking poisons himself you're like ah, you gotta be you gotta watch out for those dented cans <laughs> yeah I actually I'm really love that. Hands. I really love that because uh, it's like you know, it's like that desperation, you know, of like, mm-hmm. and they and they uh, they say it. Um, oh no, it's after that. They say it after that. The girl almost getting scurvy, and you're like, you're like, oh damn, of course that would happen, you know, because we don't have the general like we should have fruits and shit. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> the, the people are just getting scurvy again, uh, like it's pirate days or some shit. Um, I. I do love, um, and it happens before man, man figures it out, but three or five is, and I mean, I'm in, in the best way. It's just an absolute fucking badass constantly. Just yeah, as, always. As, always a badass, And she just fucking single handedly takes down these motherfuckers. And you're just like, God damn. It's like hero barely fucking helps here. Hero, hero lifts up a gun and then gets shot in the hand. And she's like, <laughs> just like, uh, Oh boy, time to and, carry this entire team again. And three or five fucking brutally, you know, fucking takes the other two girls out in, in the, uh, um, burkas and then and then snap like gently gently snaps this the other girl's neck and leaves her alive but like being like you tell your ring to leave me the fuck alone you know mm-hmm. like and you're just like hell yeah but it's also one of those <laughs> things where you're like oh she gonna come back and she gonna be she gonna be angry as shit you know like you're just like yeah. you're like that, that ain't good um I do think it's uh uh I think it's really quite funny um the, the, I actually really like the characterization of Hero dealing with her trauma by like going around and taking pictures of everybody. Mm-hmm. Um they reveal after that, you know, after York gets all angry at Hero being back, it's like he's shown the photos and like I really love that like her notes and photos there. First off, it's very memento. You're like, oh yes, gotta keep, you know, like <laughs> gotta remember. But I, uh, you know, I, I, I actually feel like it's it's personal, you know, like you're mm-hmm. like, oh shit, <clears throat> you know. And it's also more visually interesting, just on that oh, yeah. level, than like I read her journal, right? You're like so much, so much nicer than that. Um, and also, you know, even in the apocalypse, Polaroids fucking rock, you know, like you're like, oh, there it is, uh, instant film, bitches. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We never should have moved at all beyond it. Just instant, instant photos. Um, I also <laughs> really love Hero dealing with Victoria as this like ghost. You yeah, know? like uh, it's done well. You know, like in where I so literally many, so just many last stories week, do it. Just last week was talking about Peacemaker, where yeah. you're just like, is this weird? Is this good or not? You know, like, and I feel like here in Why the Last Man, you're like, yep, very good, very well done. You know, like where it's just like, of course, this is the person who traumatized her. This is the person mm-hmm. she idolized and looked up to. And I mean, same thing with Peacemaker. It's like, you know, that was his dad. You know, even if he was the worst, it's like it's still still his dad, still the guy he looked up to the most. The thing, the guy he probably thought about all the time you know same here with victoria it's like uh, it's lots you know just thinking about it, you know victoria constantly um i do think this this volume kind of like uh ends in such a funny way because they do the whole ampersand getting stolen by toyota and mm-hmm. i know toyota's gonna be coming back because of course that's too badass of a person to like yeah and we know. had already built up to her with the uh with the troop she yes. was in that section too and she's got ampersand you know like and you're just yeah. like oh shit um which of course now we know ampersand's actually the real thing you know like w- reason why we need that everything you know like yeah like, it's Damn. important it's good that the series like off the bat wasn't just like oh it's not just men it's every male mammal 
and creature right like period on the planet and you have that great bit at the start of like the arizona issue where dr man is just like oh wow i just realized the pygmy shrew is now extinct yeah and and then opossums are going to be gone soon and then rats are going to be gone soon it's just the domino effect yeah you're like damn and you just like, like the ramifications of how that just will fuck up the ecosystem and how you, soon you'll you just won't have food yeah it, it it shows how much you know like we try to separate the two genders but we re, you know rely on on it you know like yeah. it's just like damn and i don't i don't mean that there's two genders i'm sorry if i sounded like i said that uh but uh two sexes I, yeah no two sexes yeah. uh that's what i meant uh because there's many different genders and i do Love that back in 2002, why the last man was dealing with some fucking like, there's just some crazy shit on that stuff. You yeah. know, like you're like, hell yeah, guys, you really fucking actually nailed it. You know, like <laughs> instead of being, instead of shying away from like, yeah, that, you know, like a lot of women might dress up as men, you know, like, or, you know, like what or happens. identify as such. Yeah. Or identify as such. And you're just like, you're like, oh yeah. And, or not want to be gendered at all. You know, mm-hmm. it's, you know, like, and you're like, hell yeah, dude. Brian K. Vaughn had this, you know, back in 2002. You're like, hell yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's sort of like um, there were people there were people being upset over the Netflix, like, Sandman casting. Just yes. because they, like, had, like, the pronouns listed on the cast and stuff like that. And because we uh, hired, like, a non-binary um, actor to play Desire, which, of, of course, this Desire. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? Yeah, like, it's just yep. one of those things where, like, tell me you haven't read the books without telling me you haven't read these books. <laughs> exactly like fucking neil gaiman was being progressive in the 80s yeah right you're like come on uh i i the only reason why i think toyota just seems seems to come out of nowhere you know like it seems a li- i know she's been built in and she's of course hired by somebody you know like and they're kind of playing up like and they do address know. that like it is weird because even yeah. york's just like where the fuck did this ninja come from i think it's funny they keep being she keeps being like this samurai shit and he's like ninja ninja <laughs> <laughs> He's like, it's not a samurai. Like, I, I fucking love that shit. I thought that. Was I love super funny. York being like, of course, the one dude left on Earth would be the fucking Is, pop culture elitist. Right? You're like, of course, of course. Because we put so much stake in that. Like, he's <laughs> upset with 355 that he doesn't get like the Doctor No reference when she gives him a Walther. Yeah, I do think that that's one of the things that I will will throw as an actual criticism against mm. this book is that. It is very much written as like, what if a nerd survived the apocalypse, you know, like, and it's kind of like, it's very much like he is a very set person and it's so well written that it does. I'm not really criticizing it, but it is very much like, uh, you know, like it's sometimes nerds writing themselves into the Mm -hmm. stories, you know, like type of thing. And that would be my only like main criticism is that sometimes it's like, uh, but uh, why the last man of course solves that by everyone yeah. else not being a fucking nerd and or understanding what he's even fucking saying and just what and just the arc that we put yorick through in general helps that yeah exactly. just like completely shattering his like preconceived like notions about the way like sex and gender roles work and the fact of like what type of person he is and mm-hmm. like hey morality's not black and white yep yep especially um, in these times so th- i mean that's that's the plot of all the books, and we've kind of yeah, gone into the deeper themes and everything that we wanted to talk about. Um, but I basically, did, go ahead. I did love, I just an aside, just because I love the jokes in this book. This book constantly always cracks me up. The the bit right at the end where York's just like, Ugh, on the road again. Willie yeah. Nelson's corpse can suck my dick. You're just like, damn, dude. Damn, savage. Uh... And we didn't bring it up. I love the bit at the Washington Monument in the first volume where they're talking about, like, all the artists who are now gone. Yeah, yeah. right. They're like, he's dead. You know, like, he's dead. You know, like, I, I thought it was kind of sad. You know, like, you're like, damn, that's a, that's a rough fucking thought. You know, like, you're just like, yeah, but... It's interesting, you know, because it's like it's one of those things that, you know, in in you know, in a lot of modern feminism, you don't want to give any credit to men. And and I think Brian K. Vaughn's able to be like, Yeah, but you know, some men are not that bad. You know, like you know, like he's like he's like, They're all dead, but you know, some of them were great losses, you know, like and mm-hmm. you're like you're like, Yeah, yeah, feel that. Feel that. Um <laughs> uh 
I I do um I do think that one of the most important parts about this is that like, is that of course the question comes up, you know, how would women handle this, you know, but it's really not just like, it, it's funny because it's not just women surviving. It's of course women like repairing the planet, you know, like bringing mm -hmm. it like, you know, like it's like with the, but it's like, it's funny because it's a quite, it's like, it's like a gapped question because like you said, the, without being able to reproduce what happens you know mm -hmm. like what happens you know like that what as we as time goes on you know um but you know that's that's a that's a question for later in the books that's the other books that's a, i'm sure he's gonna answer the some of the other fucking half. questions um but basically guys yeah read read some why the last man with us uh join in read these books uh that you can get them pretty much at any comic book store pretty please go anywhere. to your Please go to your local comic book store. Um, uh, you know that's always helpful to your local comic book place, and hopefully they'll have it. Yep. Um, and they're only like what, like twenty bucks a piece? Yeah, it's not, there are only course, five uh, of them as far as cheap. the books are concerned. If you yeah. decide to go the trade paperback like volume route, it'll be even cheaper. Yeah, and most importantly, you can do it the way we first read it. Go to your local fucking library. I guarantee they'll probably, if they have a graphic novel section, they will have Why the Last Man. Yeah, um, this is definitely like one of the most popular. It'll be there. It'll be there. So, uh, and I would say that's probably if you want, if you're gonna save money, do, if, if, if uh, go and do that. But I'm not saying that's our official recommendation for if it belongs on your shelf. I'm just saying. You know, we understand money's hard. Uh, yeah. You know, get get the read the books the way you can. If if go into a free public library to read them, reads it. That's the yeah, most American our, fucking thing our, you can do. Our college library is how I read Why the Last Man. Yep, preacher. At least the first half of it until we couldn't find the other ones is how I read all of preacher. It's how I read all of Sandman. Yep, all of Black Sand, uh, Black Sad, uh, all of. A bunch of Batman stuff. A bunch mm -hmm. of uh, they had a bunch of cross. Uh, we we were embarrassed with riches. Somebody was a comic book fan when they were buying those books because they also had all the crises for DC books, which was awesome. You know, like and they had a bunch of the weird, which always cracked me up that they had it. The like uh, Stan Lee writes. Yeah, and then it was the like, what if Stan Lee created Superman and Batman yep. and stuff like that. And you're like, oh, oh, they were always interesting. I was always mm -hmm. down to see what Stan Lee was fucking up to. I still have, um, what's the fucking book? Uh, he, oh, The Traveler, where he's just like traveling through time that, mm -hmm. it, that Stan Lee started. And it was just one of those things that, uh, it's on Boom, of course. Yeah, Boom, the publisher. I love I loved when Stan Lee was just like making shit up. You're like, hell yeah, bro. Let's go. Let's see what you got. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> and it always was interesting shit. Uh, but beside the point, um, get, it, it, I mean, we won't give our full official does it belong on the shelf, but you can kind of get from the way we're phrasing all the masterful and everything. It belongs, Probably, yeah. it, it belongs on your fucking shelf a little bit. Even with uh, you like having not read the rest and I have, I imagine your thoughts are just like, I doubt, I doubt. I think you doubt it's going to completely fall apart. Yes, exactly. It's one of those things where I I think you lose a little confidence in volume two where you're like, where are we going? Uh, and then by volume three, you're, you're, you're just like, this is going to fucking, you know, like we're going to fucking steamroll to the fucking end here, you know, mm -hmm. like, and, 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 and I, I'm not saying you, you lose full confidence in volume two. It's just one of those things where you're like, well, we're expanding here. What are, where are we expanding to? You know, like yeah. once we're there, you're like, Hey, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but yeah, uh, guys, thank you for listening in. Thank you for checking out the show. Uh, please make the algorithm work, you know, hit the buttons around our faces, make it, make it happen. Uh, make yep. it, make it work. Um, and you know, engage, Ask us, like, if you want to hear about, like, any other, like, comics and stuff that we could dive into. Because I like doing comic book deep dives. We haven't done enough yeah. of them over the course of the show. So, like, this year it's just like, I really want to do more comic book shit. Or if you have a favorite moment from Why the Last Man, please put it down below. Or if you have an opinion on the show. What if you were like, damn, I thought the show was pretty fucking good, but, uh... FX fucking sucks. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, like, uh, it's, it's, uh, let us know. Let us know down below. Uh, also, you can find our social medias if you want to interact with them. There, uh, the Warp Shelf has its own Facebook, but also you can find everything on Galaxy of Geek, which uh, ha you can go on galaxygeek.com. 
Um, and of course we have our own personal Twitters and Instagrams. Uh, you can find me under yep, Frank mod Karika. And, uh, and then I also have yep. Gundam. If you want to see some of these fucking Gundam, uh, I just finished this motherfucker the other day. He's just getting his posts up on there. So check him out. The goth crimson custom fucking check that shit out. Um, but then, uh, guys be sure to support galaxygeek.com to find, uh, where this, sh- uh, the whole show is. If you want the audio or the video, it's all there on Galaxy and Geek. Uh, but we want, you know, if, if you're listening or watching either way, we appreciate you. And really, we thank you from the bottom of our heart for, uh, for participating with the show. Thank you so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, guys, I hope you have a great week and get caught up on Why the Last Man, uh, because we're yeah, going to have. Probably- Probably we're gonna do the next episode no, because the next we got episode, something important coming. You you know what we're doing? Yeah, it's the Batman. It's the Batman time. We are at the time we're recording this. Like I'm literally going to see it in two hours. Yes, exactly. So guys, get prepped. We're gonna do the Batman, and then we'll do why the last man a noose. Uh, yeah, so, potentially because I still gotta get. I still have yes. the last book over here, so I gotta get it to you. You gotta get it to me. Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll make it happen, but part two will be coming eventually. Um, but make sure that you're excited about the Batman for our next episode Mm -hmm. next Friday. Um, I will absolutely be seeing it maybe once or twice. So, Mm -hmm. (laughs) um, guys, thank you so much. Have a great rest of your day. See you next.